I have to tell you how lucky and blessed I feel that I, be, I am able to make a living picking on those people that I love the most. And, uh, <laughs> and yes, they do know. I'm amazed at how many people come over to me and ask me, Are you, is your wife aware of the way you talk about her? <laughs> no. <laughs> she thinks I'm a bricklayer. Well, honey, I'm off to Milwaukee to build another home. <laughs> I'm extremely blessed. It wasn't always that way. I was, uh, somebody asked me recently in an interview, and I forget what, what magazine it was, um, uh, a couple of questions that I, I thought were, one of, one of them was, uh, what is it you love most about your wife? And uh, it didn't take me long to think about that. Uh, my wife has seen every demon that I had to offer, and uh, she's still there. I mean, isn't, that is an amazing, amazing gift, because believe me, I've had my share of demons. And, and my father, and, and another question he asked me, he says, how, was it, how did an atheist from the south side of Chicago wind up living in Nashville as a born-again Christian working churches? from Atlantic City casinos and Las Vegas casinos. And I gotta tell you, when I started comedy 20 some years ago, this was the furthest thing from my idea of a resume. And it just again shows you God's great sense of humor. And uh, <laughs> you, you, you have to know my relationship with God for I don't know how many years of just total blasphemy and, and angerness and bitterness and how much I railed at God and um, uh, my father, I, 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 I crawled into an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting 15 years ago and uh, just basically wanted to quit drinking. And, and my father had wrestled with alcohol his entire life, asked me, he goes, what was the catalyst that got you to quit drinking? Because like most alcoholics, I had had a, a very, a number of opportunities to, uh, a number of reasons to quit. The drunk tanks and the bar fights and the, and the wreck cars and the DUIs and the, uh, all that stuff. So my father asked me, he said, what was the one catalyst? And I told him, uh, honestly, I said, I beat my six-month-old son in a crib. As a man, I couldn't think of anything that could sink me any lower th than that. And I'll never forget that night, and I, I keep telling this story because it, I need to be reminded of the man I was. The, my wife had come and got him away from me, and she was walking out of the room and, and I had realized what I had done and, and that, that tinge of conscience that breaks through even the most the drunken haze and the conscience that comes. And I've started to walk towards them and as he's leaving, they're leaving, he's faces over her shoulder and she's walking out of the room and, I, and as I got towards him and I got into the light his eyes saw me six months old they got as big as saucers and filled with fear and those eyes haunted me for the longest time I mean I'll I don't ever want to forget that I put that in that child I did that nobody but me his father and she sat on the bed and proceeded to feed him he was crying because he was hungry and he got beat because he was hungry and I told that story a few years ago at, a, at a, a Bill Gaither event at Family Fest. And my son, who was now 15, he was 12 at the time, came over to me and said, was I that child that you beat in the crib? And I said, yes, yes, you were, son. I was a different man then. He put his arms around me and he hugged me and he said, I forgive you. You don't know. You don't know how powerful those three words are until somebody comes and delivers you from that.